Hello everyone. Today's case is going to be another one that pisses you off and rightfully so. Because on May 26th of 2023, so less than a month ago, just before 4 a.m., police would be called to a 12th floor apartment at the Forest House on East 165th Street in the Bronx Borough of New York. The caller was mother at home with her three children and she was claiming that she had found her six-year-old daughter, Jalea Eason, cold and unresponsive inside of a closet. And when first responders would arrive, they would find the little girl covered in bruises, not breathing, and she was completely unresponsive. And right off the bat, everybody realized that something was not right in the situation. And not long after arriving, little Jalea would be pronounced dead. Immediately after, 26-year-old Lanai Eason, who was the mother of the three children, would be brought down to the precinct for questioning. And her two other children would actually be brought to a hospital because they also had injuries that needed to be assessed. So what happened here? Who is this mother? Why was her daughter found dead in that state? Why were her other two children being brought to a hospital in the states that they were in? And what the hell was going on here? And on top of that, I haven't seen anything posted of people talking about this little girl. I don't know anything about her. Usually I dedicate a moment of the video to talk about who the person was. And I love to include little details that try to make us connect to them more. The funny little quirks that their family and friends talk about that they remember, but there's literally nothing on little Jalea. There's nothing on these children in general. There's no one that's come out to speak about who Jalea was as a person, how she was. And that's honestly, that's really heartbreaking. And I think she needs to be remembered than more than that. And I can't help but to wonder what her favorite movie was and what her favorite color was and what her future could have been like if her mother hadn't taken away from her. And it's sad. It's sad that we don't know anything about her. When police arrived, they realized that this 12th floor apartment was a absolute disaster and it was not suitable for children to be living in. The complaint stating that it was littered in trash, including soiled clothing and linen, open containers of food stacked up on the floor and other garbage. There was food rotting in the refrigerator and cabinets. Insects infested the home and the place smelled of urine and feces. And the state of Lanaya's other two children would also be called into question. Police said when they arrived at the home, they also seen signs of restraint marks and bruising on them. Eight-year-old Jazir and three-year-old Jalayan would would also be found and had various cuts, scars, rashes. NYPD detective Frankie Hernandez saying, and I quote, Jazir had countless small lacerations and various stages of healing on his back, scalp, arms, and legs. He also had a cut on his forehead and a deep partially healed gash on his scalp. Little Jalayan had a long discolored scar on her waist and a widespread discolored rash on her inner thighs and buttocks, end quote. So these two children were in terrible condition, but it would get worse because as the police investigation furthered, they would end up speaking to neighbors and the neighbors had a lot to say and it was honestly pretty sick to hear it turns out that an upstairs neighbor named dennis rivera actually heard what is thought to have been jalea's last moments saying that he was alarmed by an early morning commotion when he heard jalea screaming for her life he said, and I quote, at 3.42 in the morning, that girl was screaming. She was screaming for dear life. She was screaming like hell. She kept saying, stop, 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 end quote. And as Jalea screamed, he said he heard thumps of her little body being bashed around. And it turns out that this wasn't the first time that neighbors had heard screaming. The neighbor below the apartment ended up telling reporters that they heard children up there all the time, running around, screaming, saying it was heartbreaking. But then that brings in the question, why didn't anybody call the authorities? Now, I'm not saying that this is an excuse, but it does seem that this building was for lower income families and one of those places where no one asks questions. You kind of keep to yourself. You don't stick your nose in other people's businesses. And the neighbors have kind of corroborated that from interviews. I don't even know her name. I just always say hi to her. Wow. I don't know my neighbors like that, to be honest with you. I like to come in and out of my building and mind my business. It is really shocking. Everybody keeps to themselves here. Either way, it's absolutely heartbreaking that these children were screaming for dear life and no one came to help them. No one came to their rescue. And it would turn out that even when these children asked for help and told someone what was happening to them, nothing happened because it would also turn out that this wasn't the first time police were called to this apartment. There have been several calls of DV to the family's address, but the details on these calls have not been released at this time. An anonymous person would also come out and say that Lanaya was actually the subject of an abuse and neglect case against her eight-year-old son about a year prior. And I also wrote reports that there was another CPS case on top of that one. It would turn out that October of 2022, Jazir school had reported that he had come to class with a bruised and swollen face. And he ended up telling his teacher that his mother had kicked and punched him because he had drank out of the sink. The school also reported that Jazir had been absent way too often. When he did attend school, he'd be picked up 
An hour or more after dismissal, he wore the same dirty clothes for days at a time and he smelled of urine. And we've seen this story happen way too often where children go to school, they end up telling a teacher what is happening to them at home and nothing seems to change. If anything, it usually gets worse, which is absolutely ridiculous. Now, despite the teachers reporting what was happening to Jazeera, state files say that when a caseworker visited the apartment a week later, a whole week later, no marks were present on Jazeera. However, Jazeera did tell the caseworker that his mother had punched him. He admitted to a literal CPS caseworker that his mother was abusing him, yet allegedly he also told this caseworker that he felt safe with his mother, which you hear this also from children that are abused. They, they don't want to leave their mother or their father or whoever is abusing them because that's their parent. They love them still. So it seems like the caseworker did nothing, even though a seven, eight-year-old child was admitting that his mother was beating him. And not just beating him, literally punching him in the face to the point that he goes to school and teachers are concerned. So yeah, basically, despite the school reporting it, witnessing it, nothing really seemed to happen. And it just seems to be the same narrative over and over again. Nothing happened for Jazeera. It seems like Jalea was also, something was happening to her because she ended up dying. So clearly there was something going on in this household and it kept getting overlooked. Jalea was also five years old around this time when the stuff was happening with Jazeera and it seemed that she was not enrolled in school at this time. And I think we can even see just going back through social media that Lanaya seemed to loathe her daughter. There seemed to be something going on where she was like jealous of her or something. You know, parents usually post cute photos of their children on social media for their birthdays, you know, fawning over the past years and how proud they are of their child. But when it comes to Lanaya, she posts something like this when Jalea turned four years old, the caption reading, and I quote, Happy birthday to my baby, my first daughter, the one who pushes my buttons the most. You so beautiful, but that attitude is stank. Laugh my fucking ass off. Love you to the moon and back, end quote. And you'll see this pattern of how she posts about her children and acts as if nothing is wrong, when meanwhile, all of this stuff is happening behind the scenes. She was trying to post these photos of her children saying how good they looked dressing them up and posing them and posting these pictures to try to present a perfect family life. When behind the camera, she was beating her children in a filthy apartment. Now this video would go viral on TikTok of Jalea on her birthday. So I'm gonna play it for you now and then we're gonna talk about it. Hey girl. Hey girl. Hi. Is your birthday? Uh -huh. Why you look weird? <laughs> hey birthday girl. Give me a piece on. Now in this video, Jalea looks terrified in my opinion. And the first thing I said out loud once I watched this video was that this video reminded me of baby Totu. And if you don't know about that case, you can find it on my channel. I did a deep dive on this child in Azerbaijan named baby Totu. And there's been a bunch of videos of baby Totu as well that have gone viral where people are alleging she's being abused. And in my opinion, I think something is going on there as well. But this video of Jalea just reminded me of Totu so much because you can see how stiff she looks. And now seeing this video of Jalea where she's looking terrified, she's so stiff that if she just looks at her mother or moves the wrong way, she's going to snap at her. Seeing a video like this and knowing what was most likely happening behind the scenes to this little girl, knowing that she would later be found dead in a closet, non-responsive, not breathing with marks on her, restraint marks, bruises. If this video can capture all of that and now we know what was happening to little Jalea behind the scenes, it really makes me worried about baby Totu. But this video isn't about Totu. This video is about why a mother would do this to her children. What would cause someone to think that this is okay? Well, I honestly didn't find that much because there's not that much out there about Lanaya. But I did see that when Lanaya was getting investigated for the abuse of her son, she had told a caseworker she had been diagnosed during the pandemic with bipolar disorder, but she had never gotten help for it. Now, could that explain why Lanaya would fly into rages and beat those babies for no good reason? Yeah, it may. But does it excuse it? Hell no. Lanaya is a grown ass woman who if she can acknowledge she has an issue, she could also go get help for it. Considering that these three children that she had, her three babies, she should be putting them first. And if her mental health is too much that she can't take care of herself and it's causing her to literally abuse her children to the point that they die, there's no excuse in that. 
Two days after Jalea's death, or what I would call a murder, Lanaya would not be arrested and charged with, you know, first degree murder for the death of her child. Instead, she'd be charged with acting in a manner injurious to a child. And I also seen she's being hit with child endangerment charges for allegedly neglecting and harming her other two children as well. Now, these charges could all be upgraded and they're all pending an autopsy on little Jalea. So if that comes out, whenever that comes out, I will definitely keep you updated. Because in my opinion, this case is pretty cut and dry. Lanaya admitted she was the only one home so there was no one else that could have done this to little Jalea and it seems that there is a history here. So yes I definitely think her charges should be upgraded. In my opinion that night Jalea did something that absolutely made Lanaya fly into a rage because as we heard earlier something as harmless as drinking out of the sink would cause Lanaya to fly into a rage and punch her eight-year-old son in the face. So honestly Jalea could have just done any little minor thing the wrong way and it could have made Lanaya fly into a rage. And from there, I think Lanaya beat that baby up and down that apartment. The neighbors admitted to hearing Jalea begging for her life. They heard the thudding, but Lanaya just continued to wail on little Jalea. And I think after that, she ended up tossing her in a closet and locking her in there as a punishment. And when she went back to see how she was doing later, she had died from her injuries. That's murder, if you ask me. And I think it's an injustice of Julia's precious little life that was stolen from her so violently, let alone the years of life that Jalea had to suffer at the hands of her mother and her two other siblings had to as well. It seems that these children never knew happiness and that breaks my heart. But as I said, and understandably, police are waiting for this pending autopsy to be ruled a homicide before they can move further with other charges. At this point, I've seen that Lanai has been arraigned and she's actually been released on an ankle monitor. But thankfully, her two other children have actually been removed from the home and they're currently in child services care. So even though Lanai is out, she's not gonna be having contact with those children, thankfully. But it does seem that Lanai can't keep her mouth shut. Now, I didn't get to see any of these posts because it seems that Lanai has now privated her Instagram account, but people have actually reposted some of the things that she's posted. In this reel that she posted on Instagram, she is talking about how fine she is. And honestly, I think she thinks that she's hot shit. Again, she tried to act all cool and show off her children on social media, pretending she had this perfect little life with them when really they were living in filth and she was beating them. Those children were terrified of her, yet she's posting stuff like this. And what I also wanna know is where are the fathers of these children? Where's Jalea's father in all of this? Because they're nowhere to be seen. They have not made any public statements. Their children are being beaten to the point of death. These children were going to school with bruises on their face. The teachers were reporting Lanaya to CPS. There's been all of these different things happening. Where are the fathers? Did they not know about any of this happening? Did they not see the bruises on their children? Did they not have questions to why the children were always in the state that they were? There's videos I've seen like this and others where Lanaya and her kids are on a merry-go-round with other people. You know, they're not there alone. It seems that she had friends or family that were around, but how do these other people not notice these children's demeanors and the bruises on them? Did they ever question what was going on there? And if not, that is disgusting and it makes them just as vile. Now I did do some digging around and I did find that Jalea's father goes by Zip Em Up Cranch on social media. And he did do a post on his Facebook saying, and I quote, rest in peace to my daughter. I'm heartbroken. God help me, please, end quote. Now we don't know his involvement in all of this, but it does seem that he's wheelchair bound and he's trying to be a rapper. And it also seems like he has older children and it seems like he's, currently or was recently with a whole nother woman. He's not with Lanaya, but it does seem like he did see his children. And it turns out that it seems like Jalea and Jazir were both his children. It seems like Lanaya was a primary caregiver maybe. And he maybe he only seen them every once in a while. I don't know. We don't know the behind the scenes in it, but it still makes me wonder how did no one else say something? How did no one else do something? The teachers tried. It seems like nothing happened. And I can't help but to notice that in every other photo I see of Jalea and her brother, they look sickly. They look sad. They're not smiling. They look underweight. How did no one help these kids? Their family didn't help them. CPS didn't help them. It seems that they tried to do everything their little selves could and nothing worked. They screamed for their lives and no one helped them. It seems like they were screaming for help a lot longer than the night that Jalea died. And they were stuck with her and they could not leave. 
Now, as I said, we're still waiting on this autopsy report that's pending to see what charges are going to happen, but I'm also really curious what the actual cause of death is going to be. And once all of that comes out, if it is made public, I am going to talk to you all about it because I am very interested in this case. This is something that I think really needs to be talked about. We've seen cases like Little Gabriel's that were made into Netflix documentaries, and that documentary, his case, broke my heart. I bawled my eyes out when I watched that, and I thought, you know, once everyone hears the story, things have to change, things will change, people will start taking things more seriously when children say them, but clearly, clearly fucking not, because clearly things like this are still happening up until a couple weeks ago, and they're probably still happening right now. So if you see something, please say something because it could have helped little Jalea, it could have helped little Jazeer. And I say that knowing that the teachers did say something and still nothing happened. So I I don't know at this point because I, it's, there's just one too many. There's one too many of these cases. It's like every single day I turn around and there's another one that pops up. There's another Jalea, there's another Gabriel and it's disgusting and it's sickening. So how do you all feel about this case? Did you hear about it? Because I, I haven't really heard many people talking about this case and I think it definitely needs to be talked about. But as I said, I will keep you all updated on this. And if you do wanna stay updated on Jalea's case or other cases, I do recommend hitting that subscribe button. It allows me to continue to create content like this. It allows me to continue talking about very important topics like this. It allows me to spread the word on these cases. I hope you all stay safe out there, lock your windows and doors, and I hope to see you in the next video.